Welcome to the first of my 2019 NFL Draft Scouting Reports. The plan was to start making these breakdowns after the college football season, but Nick Bosa made the surprising choice to withdraw from Ohio State to focus on preparing for the draft process. A few days later, my man Malik Powers commented on one of my mock drafts and suggested that I do some scouting report videos, and since Bosa is clearly one of the best prospects in this draft, I thought it would be a good time to get a head start and see if you guys like these and how I should adjust my approach moving forward. And because Bosa is already the top prospect on most boards, risking another injury by coming back despite the opportunity to help Ohio State compete for a national championship doesn't make financial sense for him. Personally, Houston defensive tackle Ed Oliver is the prospect that I have at number one on my draft board because I view him as a nearly equal prospect to Bosa at a position that is really hard to find playmakers of this caliber. Those making the counter argument that the edge rusher position is the premier position in football are the ones that are putting Bosa over Oliver. Ed Oliver has also declared for the draft already, so you can expect his scouting report to be one of the first offseason breakdowns that I do. Regardless of which player you see as the superior prospect, one thing is clear headed into the 2019 NFL draft season this class is loaded with defensive line talent so my fellow draft nerds make sure you subscribe to this channel because this is my favorite thing to cover and I'll be making a ton of draft videos this year also if you could do me a favor and hit the like button I would really appreciate it helps grow this channel and helps tell me which type of videos you guys want me to keep on making let's get started with Bosa when Nick Bosa arrived at Ohio State, I assumed that there was no way he could be better than his older brother Joey Bosa, who ended up going number three overall to the Chargers in 2016. You may remember the quote-unquote knock on Joey was that some teams didn't like his nonchalant attitude and didn't think that he loved football. Basically, some old guys thought he was a burnout college student who wouldn't take this opportunity seriously. I think all of those comments were made in an attempt maybe to drop him in the draft because Joey was still the first non-quarterback taken in that draft. Joey has gone on to become one of the best edge defenders in the NFL in only a couple of seasons. I thought this was going to be the year he really turned it on, and in my NFL preseason predictions video, I picked him for Defensive Player of the Year, but a foot injury robbed him of that chance. But Nick Bosa has grown into a near clone of his older brother Joey. They are built the same and offer a well-rounded skill set as an every-down defensive end. The biggest difference between the two Bosa brothers is that Joey is slightly bigger and stronger while Nick is a little quicker and more agile. It's weirdly similar to the contrast between J.J. Watt and T.J. Watt, but a more subtle difference between the Bosa brothers. In fact, the Bosa brothers are really just apples that have fallen from their respective trees but not just any ordinary tree. Their father, John Bosa, was the 16th overall pick out of Boston College by the Miami Dolphins in 1987, and it's obvious where the two sons get their size at. After three sacks in his rookie season, John shattered his knee when an offensive lineman dove at his legs in an attempt to cut block, which was legal at the time. John Bosa never fully recovered and lost a lot of the athletic ability that made him a first-round pick. He flamed out of the league after two sacks in the following season. We've come a long way since then medically, and the cut blocks are no longer legal for that exact reason, so who knows what would have happened to John's career this this day and age. John's rehab experience probably weighed heavily into Nick's decision to withdraw from Ohio State to make sure he's healthy for the draft. But their dad isn't the only one providing the brothers with NFL genetics. John Bosa met his wife through a fellow Dolphins teammate, Eric Kumro, the 16th overall pick from the 1988 draft. Eric introduced John to his sister Cheryl, and the rest is history. But enough about the birds and the bees of the Bosa brothers. Let's get into what makes Nick Bosa a great football player. Let's start with the strengths. From a technical standpoint, Nick Bosa has ideal hand usage and uses the same swipe move as his brother Joe. Joey. All of the Bosa boys have the same non-stop motor that makes up for the lack of elite athleticism, and Nick is no exception. Not only does he have an explosive first step, he can win with power or turn the corner with speed. While Joey is strictly a defensive end, Nick has the athleticism to where he could potentially play outside linebacker in a 3-4, but I think that having him play in space would be such a waste of this talent. And with the way defenses are playing more and more nickel and dime as NFL offenses spread them out, Nick Bosa needs to be setting the edge on every play. My favorite trait of Nick Bosa is his ability to really show up in big games. You really Really need your big time players to show up in big moments. As far as the weaknesses go, there are not many flaws in his game and the only stuff that I could really come up with feels like nitpicking. His aggression is one of his better qualities in my opinion, but it can lead him to being a little overly aggressive at times and misreading the play. This is something that will improve with time and experience, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Another nitpick would be that he's probably not going to test well at the NFL Combine, and by not test well I mean that he's not going to be the biggest, fastest, or maybe even the strongest in any of the popular drills. However, I will be looking forward to the simulcast of Nick and Joey doing each drill because I'm sure they'll be pretty similar. Joey Bosa ran a 4 8-6 in the 40, 24 bench reps, and a 32 inch on the vertical jump. The three cone and 20 yard shuttle are where these guys will excel because of their short area quickness. And the final nitpick is one that I'm sure will be talked about ad nauseum during the draft process. After leaving Ohio State due to the abdomen injury, and you look at the injury history with Joey and even their dad, John, are there durability concerns is the question. Whether you think that question is justified or not, this is something that NFL teams have to consider when investing millions of dollars into the selection of a player at the top of the NFL draft. As far as an NFL 
NFL comparison, I think that you have to look at his brother Joey Bosa, obviously, but somebody else that I look at is Demarcus Lawrence and Chris Long. As far as projecting where he goes, I think it's pretty easy to say that Nick Bosa is likely going to go in the top three of this NFL draft. Just like his brother, Nick Bosa could go as high as one overall, but Justin Herbert and the Giants could push him to the second overall pick, possibly. Let's look at some ideal landing spots for Nick Bosa. Since this is such an early scouting report, it's impossible to know what teams will have a legit shot at drafting him with one of the top draft picks in the 2019 NFL draft. Nick Bosa is the type of player that all 32 teams in the NFL would love to get their hands on, but these are the teams with a need and a chance to land Bosa in April. First up, I have the Raiders. This is a pretty obvious one after getting rid of Khalil Mack in a trade, but I don't know if anyone anticipated the Raiders to be this bad this quickly. The John Gruden rebuild could get a nice jump start with a guy like Bosa to build around, and the Bosa bros would get to watch each other play live twice a year in the AFC West, so that'd be kind of cool. The second group of teams that I have, I kind of put them all together because they're in a similar situation. The Bills, the Cardinals, and the Jets. These three teams all drafted their future quarterbacks in the 2018 NFL Draft and now need to build around them. All three could use offensive line help also, but if Bosa is on the board, I would expect them to wait to address the offensive line for a potential all-pro edge defender. Next on the list, I have the 49ers. The 49ers are in a similar situation and now have their quarterback. Their defensive line has three first-round picks on it already, but two of them were chosen when the 49ers were running a different defensive scheme. Solomon Thomas and Nick Bosa are actually pretty similar too and would give the 49ers a great bookend of defensive ends to build their defense around and then the last ideal fit is the Colts the late breakout of Marcus Hunt was a pleasant surprise but the Colts defense needs younger impact players to build around Matt Eberflus has done a great job with the limited talent on that defense in his first year as defensive coordinator and a player like Bosa would really help his defense take the next step so that Andrew Luck won't be expected to put 35 points on the board every game so there you have it the Nick Bosa scouting report let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video I want to know if you thought it was too long too much detail or not enough film breakdown it will be interesting to see how much game footage that gets through on the final draft of this video because i want to use game footage to sort of prove my point and i don't want it to get flagged for copyright but at the same time i don't want to just give you guys a slideshow so bear with me while i kind of feel out what youtube will allow me to use and i try to get through those copyright scanners Thanks as always guys, if you watched this far into the video, I want you to know that I really do appreciate you. Type draft nerd in the comments below so I know who my fellow draft nerds are and I will see you all in the next video.